All right, last opportunity, which is more of a, in, in terms of your personal financial operations, in terms of how we're operating and how we're offsetting borrowing costs. This is something that I've known about for a few years, but never actually implemented it until now. I'm gonna start uh, very, very shortly, which has to do with velocity banking and infinite banking together. Okay, I've done very few videos on this, um, not a whole lot of case studies. It's it's a little more of a high level, in my opinion, a little bit difficult. Even I myself, in my own finances, somewhat kept things a little separate, but also I've integrated it on a, on a small scale. But now um, I've had my policies for four years now, okay? And I've accumulated in one of my policies, I have a little over 201K in cash value, and I've got roughly 87,500 in loans, okay, in policy loans at a simple interest rate, 5.66%. This is something that I shared with the iCovest community already. So they got first dibs on this. Now I'm sharing it with you guys. For those who are in the house who have cash value life insurance policies in place, this may be something to consider considering the interest rate environment that we're in now today it's going up right it was just a few months ago people were getting mortgages at two and a half three and a half percent and does anybody know where it's at now i'm seeing like five percent rates mortgage rates four and a half five and up i'm seeing i'm seeing heloc rates go up now interest rates are jumping now what's really unique about life insurance space is the the interest rates do not fluctuate as fast. It fluctuates on, a, on an annual basis, right? And that can mean a, a big difference depending on where you're at in your finances, right? So we're gonna look at my numbers specifically, where I'm at. Like I said, I got one policy, 200K plus in cash value, 87,500 in policy loans at 5.66%. With this amount of cash value, I can go to a bank Minimum required, I'd say you need to have at least 75K plus in cash value, preferably. But I can now approach a bank, in this case, not just any bank, I'm gonna write the name of them. Bank Corp is the specific bank that I'm looking at, and they provide what's called an insurance backed line of credit, IBLOC. Another term for it is a cash value collateral loan. When I go to the bank, I can access up to 95% of my cash value as collateral. So I assign my cash value policy to the bank. The bank gives me a line of credit up to 95% of however much cash value I have in there, right? So let's say we wanna get the whole thing, right? 201 times 95%, say we get 190K. So I can get 190,950 as a line of credit access, right? I don't have to pay no interest until I use it. That's how the line of credit works. That's a phenomenal part. And the interest rate is based off the Wall Street Journal Prime, which currently I believe is 4%. And depending on how much cash value you have, in my particular case, they minus a half a percent the prime rate. So it's 4% minus half all the way up to 1.25%. So if I had over a million dollars in cash value, I could get an interest rate of 2.75%. So anywhere between as low as right now, today, these numbers can change and will change anywhere from 2.75 to 3.5%. So this is what I'm entitled to with my cash value. So I can go from a paying insurance to the insurance company of 5.66 and drop it all the way down to 3.5. That's a 2% drop, right? Two points, that's huge, right? Let's actually see what that number looks like. If I had, and here's the cool part, I don't have to pay this off. I can have the bank just move, I can move the line of credit, they take 87.5 out, pay that off, right? So 87,500, times 5.6, so 4,952.50. That interest is charged on my policy on an annual basis, right? So it's simple interest amortized, 4,900. If I were to move it into the line of credit, I got 
the credit limit, 190, let's say, but now I owe 87.5. 87.5, 3.5%. I just went from 49 down to three grand. And this is assuming that Denzel just consolidated debt. But is that what we do in this community? Is that all we do is consolidate debt? No, what do we do? Boom, velocity banking. I can get an insurance backed line of credit on my business. Uh oh, so I basically have a business line of credit. I now owe 87.5 and now I can do velocity banking, dumping my income, right? So you gotta know your four major numbers. This is where I'm rocking at right now. Zero debt, and I'm as low as 5K. My cash flow has gone down in the last, really earlier this year up until now. Due to the finance geek moving out, um, you know, Shinora was talking about the household, right? And how we need to rebuild and manage uh, good financial households. So even your very own personal finance geek has gone through the separation of households, families breaking up. Why? Lack of knowledge, people perishing, lack of knowledge, uh, traumas, financial traumas, spiritual traumas. You know, so there's a, a, a multitude. You've got, you know, my own family, you've got people that struggle with money their whole entire life. So there's trauma. Then you got people that don't know the word. They don't have access to the keys to the kingdom. So their spirit is in balance, imbalanced. So they experience anxiety, they experience stress, they experience worry, they experience fear, they experience doubt. So you got that, right? And then third, because they're under the jurisdiction of the United States and they're operating in the highest tax code possible, which is ordinary income tax, where you work as an employee. So now you're suffering in both jurisdictions. Mm, not don't look too good. It's only a matter of time before your family breaks. Right. So even in my own household, all this knowledge I share with you guys, even in my own household broke, people just break. It, it, it's not your fault, my fault. No, it's we have to hold ourselves accountable. Right. So some of the things that Shinora talks about, Dr. Eddie, on a spiritual level, mental health level, these are things that we must address, you know, and I have a great uh, example of what it looks like when families come together. Right, I'll give you a quick example and then we'll come back to this right here. I have a family of five that I work with. Been working with them for a few years now. Family of five. It's it's a, uh, we got a, a daughter. That's the main client that I work with. And then she has a husband. Then it's her mom and dad and then her grandpa. This is the coolest, this is one of my coolest case studies like ever. Um, I love it. Family of five. So daughter, daughter has a husband, daughter, daughter's mom and dad. So we're dealing with her mom and dad. And then she has a grandpa. They all um, operate as one in velocity banking. It's the most amazing thing I've ever seen in my life in the velocity banking world. It's one of the coolest things. This is a uh, uh, black household, right? If I'm not mistaken, pretty sure. I think they might be like either Jamaican, Bahamian. I'm not sure. I forget. Um, so you've got three generations, right? Grandpa, mom and dad, daughter, three generations becoming one. And they came together and said, we trust this kid on YouTube. So we hired him, the daughter did. And she somehow convinced her husband, her mom, her dad, her grandpa to combine all their incomes in the household. And they all equally um, got a debt tool, a debt weapon. So mom and dad has a house, daughter has a house, and I think grandpa lives with mom and dad, if I'm not mistaken. So mom and dad has a HELOC. So they have the debt tool, right? Mom and dad, and everybody has income and they somehow, some way, even I was astonished. I mean, I facilitated, I said, okay, here's the most efficient way to do this, I think. This is me talking as if I knew, but I've never done this before. But here they are putting it together. They send all their incomes into the HELOC. And then together, they gave me four or five different spreadsheets, financial spreadsheets. And I looked between all the different spreadsheets and I said, okay, um, we got to pay off mom's debt here, the car. Then we're going to jump to grandpa. Then we're going to jump to dad. Then back to you, daughter. Then husband. Then back to mom. And so we're making chunks 
in accordance to the most efficient way to recapture cash flow, save money on interest, build that credit and increase income. So they've set aside their differences, came together under one blood covenant, so to speak, right? One authority. They're listening to the authority over their finances. Me, I'm guiding them and they're obeying. And it's like, in, in, in a way, I'm, I'm jealous for them. I'm not jealous of them. I'm jealous for them. Like if, if I could figure out a way to get people who are living in households where husband's not on board, wife's not on board. I know a lot of you in the house and, and others that will catch the replay. It's just wife doing velocity banking or it's just husband doing velocity banking. I know this all and too well. And here's an amazing example of this family coming together and equally agreeing that yes, we're going to syndicate, combine all our cash flows and pay off mom's debt first because the highest interest under that particular bloodline household, right? And then from that cash flow, then we jump to dad, then jump to daughter, then jump to grandpa, bum, 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 right? Over and over again. I can't tell you how much debt they paid off. It's an insane amount. And they've acquired other debt tools along the way. Um, I think they even paid off one or one household already, if I'm not mistaken. They're, I, I barely talked to them because they're doing so well. So that is an example. I think, you know, in Shinora's Shinora world, in her world of coaching, I'm pretty sure she will address how can that actually happen? Like I'm providing the financial strategy for it. What is the mental capacity needed to surrender what you think you know about money? and what you think you know about your brother, your sister, your mother, your father, putting aside your differences of what mommy and daddy did to you because mommy wasn't there or daddy wasn't there or because of this happened and this trauma and that trauma, right? Imagine if you could set aside the differences and become one, lest they become one, can't use them, right? I think that's scriptural, correct me if I'm wrong. But coming back to this, I got a little sidetracked. I get a little excited, sorry. We got recap, cash value, Four years into the policy, I know a lot of you have policies I've been funding for a few years now, especially you've been working with me since like 2018, 2019. Here's my loan interest rate. Here's the loan. Here's the interest rate on the line of credit that I'm gonna obtain. Cost of borrowing, if I borrowed the whole 190 would be that. We don't do that in the velocity banking world, right? We don't over leverage ourselves. So we do roughly 66% or two thirds of the line of credit, right? What does that look like? 190K times bomb, 125. Well, Denzel's only in debt, the 87 on the policy. So I'm just going to chunk that. So now it's, we go from 3K, 87.5, boom, three and a half percent. Oh, okay, I did that right. So that's 3,062.50 on 87,500, right? Assuming all I did was consolidate. Velocity banking comes in, income in, right? Expenses out, cash flow stays, right? That would be like the low end number. My income's more higher than that. So it's more like 10K stays. Within six to nine months, that line of credit will hit zero. And then it's just a matter of running the bills. And then let's add a little juice to this and say credit cards, 3%, cashback rewards on majority of those expenses, I can easily, easily bring that 3000 borrowing costs to zero from the uh, cash back rewards that I average. And I got an email, a lot of you have already seen it already in terms of my living, my uh, living expenses, personal side, and then my operating expenses on the business side. And I break down all the cash back rewards on different credit cards that I have. And I'm averaging around this range. So three to five grand in cash back rewards in one year offsets the borrowing costs on that, the line of credit. Velocity banking itself brings the 3K down to like 1500 more or less because of all the money going in, right? Money coming out. And then if you want a little more gravy because you're running a business, can the interest on the line of credit be tax deductible? So talk about <laughs> offsetting, offsetting. So now I'm in the green, green, right? We've got green here, green here. And then let me not forget that the cash value on the policy itself is earning an internal guaranteed rate of return between two and 4%. 201K times say 3% right in the middle, that's six grand on the internal growth on the policy itself. So green, green, and green. 
and some more green. And then this is open-ended revolving. Use it whenever I want, whenever I need it. This is a phenomenal strategy for those who have policies in place and you have a significant amount of cash value that you've been building up. And instead of borrowing directly from the policy at the loan rate, you can potentially get an even lower rate from the bank, right? Manage that properly, do velocity banking. Either way, when, as soon as you're able to implement velocity banking on the debt tool, you automatically go faster. You can't necessarily do velocity banking as well with a policy by itself. Why? Because when you make payments and then you request policy loans, there's a bit of a longer transaction process that takes place. And the last thing you want to do is run into an issue where you don't have the cash in your checking account to pay the credit card off or pay a certain expense because you're waiting on a policy loan to hit, hit your account. So you can do it. It's just a little bit, it's inefficient versus when you can combine the two, IBC plus Velocity Banking to help offset borrowing costs in commercial jurisdiction, this can be highly effective. Now imagine doing this inside ecclesiastical law, inside the ecclesiastical sovereign state with ICOVES. You can, or I should say we can. Together, we can combine our resources on an even bigger scale. Imagine having a policy with tens of millions of dollars in cash value of which we all come together in common unity and say, we want to acquire a 500 unit property in Georgia, you know, or in Florida, or, you know, in an area where it's most ideal, most cash flow, and uh, the whole thing is tax accepted, right? So this was dealing with US commercial jurisdiction. And I just kind of chimed in on the whole ecclesiastical jurisdiction that can be quite exciting. So I'm done. I'll leave my board on the screen.